for Talk About Racing. We're off to Newmarket for the morning line. Good morning, it's a lovely summer's day here at Newmarket. We're live on the July course with the morning line. Currently on the rostrum where last night's special guests, the Counterfeit Stones, had a huge crowd rocking, but nothing counterfeit about our special guest this morning. He's 23, idolised by thousands, particularly the females, we're told. And he is, of course, the well-known Italian football supporter, Mr Frankie Dettori, who just happens to be the top jockey around at the moment. He's currently well clear in the jockey's table with 149 winners. That's 20 ahead of his former colleague and good friend Jason Weaver. And really, it's been a season of nothing but highlights for Frankie. Let's take a look at one of the most recent, Balanchine in the Irish Derby at the Curragh. Coming to the two marker and it's Balanchine, the filly. Club King Steer are challenging in second. They got the Colonel Collins out in front to Carlin. A four and a half out Balanchine from King's Theatre. They're clear of Colonel Collins out with him four. At the far line marker, Balanchine is two and a half clear. King's Taylor in second and third place. There's Colonel Collins as they race up towards the line. The Philly's going to do it. Balanchine strides away to win the Budweiser Irish Derby under Frankie Dettori. Balanchine wins it well. Four, four and a half lengths. King's Taylor second, Colonel Collins three. Well, that was a great victory. And I mean, and, uh, you're a guy that's a bubbly character. You were really animated after that. Yeah, it was great. I mean, uh, it was a great feeling. Uh, she gave me my first classic in England, the Oaks. And then she goes and goes to Ireland and beats the colt in what a style, you know. And what about the news this week? Obviously, that's very sad news. She had uh, colic, and uh, but the, the the news in the papers this morning is better that she's she's making. A bit yeah, of actually, uh, I bumped into Simon Christopher in the paper shop, and he said uh, well, this morning. Yes, yeah. and he said that uh, she had a very good night last night, and uh, you know, keep our fingers crossed. Uh, you know, the next 48 hours going to be the most important ones, but uh, she's a fighter and I uh, hope she pulls through. And she's a is she a sweet natured filly, Frankie? Is she? she is. She's a, a funny filly, you know, she, she likes to do her own thing and, you know, and but she's very gutsy and very tough, so that's a plus in her favour anyway. Right, well, um, all racing fans hope she makes a good recovery, even if she can't race again, that she's, she's all right for some. Well, we've got lots to talk to you about, but you're the striker this morning. <laughs> uh, it's taken Italy some time to wake up in the World Cup. Let's hope they're in the same sort of form as you're in. But the midfield, the midfield <laughs> dynamo, Miss Graham this morning. <laughs> Mrs. Graham dynamo. this morning. It's yes. backed up by another Graham, but not a miss. Or More a of misses. a dynamo. <laughs> Graham Good, good <laughs> yeah. morning. Good morning, James. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah. Leslie, just a quick word. Uh, colleague, I mean, trainer's wife, incidents like that, um, very worrying for all concerned. Yeah, there seems to have been an awful lot of it about at the moment, which is so sad. There's been a lot of good horses suffering from it recently in the you know, papers and, and so on. It is a worry. It's As long as you catch it early and you know, you're know you able to operate, um, that's nine-tenths of the battle. The sad thing for a lot of other horse owners is that a lot of people can't afford to operate on their horses. Which How do you actually treat it, Leslie, if you don't mind me interrupting? Um, how it happens is as a horse gets an impaction in its, uh, in its gut, either from eating its bedding or some such, even paper bedding they will eat and it gets clogged up. You've then either got to try and shift that if you catch it in time and they literally just pour liquid paraffin down the horse in the hope that this will lubricate it and move it. If that doesn't happen or you don't catch it at that stage, the horse is then, it obviously starts to sweat, it's in a lot of pain. You then have to try and keep the horse walking, don't let it lie down because that's when they will thrash around and that's when they twist the gut. Mm. If you don't move the impaction or the gut twists and you're, you've still got the time to do it, you then try and remove the section of the colon where the problem is, sew it back together and hope for the best. But there's all the stages, it depends how early you catch it as to what your success rate is going to be which often if a horse has, has eaten, had its, its evening feed, two hours later the problem happens. If nobody goes around last thing at night, that horse is going to have its problem in the middle of the night. They're not going to find it till it's too late, which is why a lot of trainers will go around at 10 o'clock at night and just look over the box door, check they're all okay. Well, the vibes, at least this morning, and from talking to Frank here, obviously that Balanchine is on the way to a recovery. Let's hope it's a full one. Leslie's talking about uh, horses eating their bedding. Let's hope we're not eating our words when we've gone through the day's races. We've got six meetings to go at. Let's take a check on where the venues are. Right, well, we've got Newmarket, Newbury, Ripon, 
Air is an evening meeting because, of course, they got the uh, golf, big golf tournament up there, the Open at nearby Turnbury, and then there's two all-weather fixtures, Southall and Linkfield. So, Mac, what's the big racing stories this morning? Well, I think news that Edward Gillespie, the managing director of Cheltenham, at the Gold Cup and the Champion Hurdler stage, and of course that'll be on Channel 4 for the next five years, is also taking over the Derby and Epsom. He's becoming managing director, this is in the Times, managing director of United Racecourses, that's Epsom, Sandown and Kempton. Of course, Racecourse Holdings Trust have bought United Racecourses, that includes Cheltenham and here at Newmarket. And Richard Evans has also picked up here about Frankie Dettori, who rode Captain Jack and Island Silver to front-running wins at Newbury yesterday, and he says here that they were a vivid reminder of Steve Cawthon at the height of his powers. So Frankie there, he couldn't get a higher compliment than that to be compared to Steve Cawthon. And of course, the best of luck to Tim Nelligan, retiring at United Racecourses, very popular in racing, have a great retirement. We'll see you at the sports plenty of times, I'm sure, that, Tim. Other very good news in the Daily Mirror from Rodney Masters is that Di Take, who had that terrible brain hemorrhage about 18 months ago, he couldn't ride Flaky Dove in the champion hurdle. It was ridden by Mark Dwyer. Well, he's coming back. He got his weight down to six stone, the poor lad. He's, he's suffered absolutely horrendously in all his life um, over this, but he's coming back, and he says here at the end that Flaky Dove could well run in the Cesarowicz at the end of the season, and we'll show that on Channel 4, and he predicts that Flaky is still in Proving, and I'm sure she can win another champion. Hopefully, with me on her back, I keep dreaming it's going to happen. And so does everyone else. Brave die tag on the way back. Hope to see you in the saddle in the winter die. Also picked up in the Sporting Life, good news for racing here. The racing has performed well in the first half of 94 on paper. Among, among a number of encouraging increases on last year, featuring the BHB statistical report for January to June, is a 5.4% upswing in average daily race attendances. They have been falling for some time. They're on the way back. That's good for racing. And, uh, and uh, interesting, the attendances are up at Wembley last night, where Moral Standards, the Derby winner, got beaten. Four to one on. He was squeezed out at the first bend. But don't worry, the Moral Standards Roadshow, that goes on. He's still a great dog, charismatic character. But the headlines of the paper refer to the big race at Newbury, that Mala Femina can halt Hannon Super Street. Richard Hannon keeps on winning. He's got four runners today. Um, in the mail, brief glimpse. A glimpse of the future, that's for Robin Goodfellow, Brian Giles, in the Express, love you millions, on the right mark, and one or two people are taking the nine to two, that, that's the best price this morning. And funny, you've got to think that John Reed has got the riding in the first four races at Newbury, but misses his favourite horse, one of them, Paddy Chalk, in the sprint, he's here to win and pay on it, riding pay on it, that's in the 4.15 at Newbury, is that, in, in Newmarket, is that a really big hint, lads? John Reed missing Paddy Chalk, he's dashing back here to ride pay on it. Well, what the conditions John Reed will have to ride Paionic this afternoon, let's take a check on those now. Here's the news overnight from Newmarket. First race, 2.15, going good to firm. The ground hasn't been watered since racing last night. Do you agree with that? Good firm ground? Yes. Good firm ground. Uh, concurred with by the jockey, uh, jockey who rode here last night. Weather bright, important travel hint. Roadworks caused problems from 4.30 yesterday afternoon. I know it was a Friday, but even so, that's pretty early when racing didn't start till 6.30. A11 Roadworks at four went ways. 10 miles south of the course. Motorists advised to, to stay on the A45, sorry, stay on the M11 and exit at the A45 junction and come into Newmarket that way. So let's move on to that uh, 4.15. Uh, uh, really tricky uh, handicap this and would you believe it, three of this field have already run in a classic this season and they're not amongst the favourites, I can assure you. They are uh, threatening the Flying Phantom and Shanghai Venture. But uh, two of them uh, clashed last time. That was last week at Newmarket. They were Heaver Golf, Rose and Manasabat, who met in the Hartley's Jam Stakes Handicap. And it's Heaver Golf Rose going for home, uphill to the final furlong. And it's Heaver Golf Rose clear by two to Clovis Point in second. In blue colours with white embellishments, Varsavia staying on. Yellow colours in Gozi, but they're inside the final furlong now. And it's Heaver Golf Rose from the front to dominate. Come home and take it. Heaver Golf Rose the winner. Clovis Point second. Manasseba third. Follow a filly in form, they say? Yeah, follow a filly in form, but that was a slightly longer trip today, isn't it? It's, it's a mile. That was seven. And uh, the thing about it is she's just a little bit fizzy. She might run a bit free early on. Having said that, there are horses that take the pace with it, and she could just sit in behind and point, poise to pounce. Leslie, what, what catches your eye in this? A few new market challenges here. Yeah, it's obviously Paonix was very impressive here winning last time, but has gone up £13 for that, which has got to be a, a question mark. Um, and we can see that now. This was... Um, 
the Pionic just, just handicap, going yeah. further and further away. Uh, I believe that the trainer, Luca Kamani, had said to John Reed beforehand, go out and be a passenger, and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> um, and it was a steering job. But, again, um, £13 is an awful lot to go up in the weights. Frankie, if John Reed was a passenger, you were a spectator. If you were well down the field, I mean, I mean what, what, did you, what did you think of Paonic? He's a, uh, a funny horse, isn't he? I mean, I think he's just come to form. I mean, the way he won uh, at the last meeting was pretty impressive. Uh, you know, he's be a big threat today in the, in the race, you know? Um, you know, last time, did he steal a march on the other jockeys, John Reed? Today, will you all be watching so he doesn't get so far ahead? Well, actually, he does. Uh, that's his way to run. You know, he just jumps and run, and we usually sit in behind. But uh, last time, he quickened up, you know? It was very impressive. And, uh, you know, it's just an improving horse. And your own filly, you rode Palana for Ian Balling last time. No, you didn't ride her last time at Ascot, did you? Yeah, I did, you, yes. Sorry, she was second there, wasn't you? No, she won in a listed race. <laughs> Get this right in a minute, this is a good start. So she won in a listed race, yeah, she came, she came from the back and quickened up well. Right. Yeah, yeah and, and you were at Ian's yesterday? Yes. Uh, actually, I get on quite well with the filly. I rode her three times, I won three times, so I had to stick by her. She's a very nice filly, she's won a listed race, and uh, I've got to stick with mine. I think uh, I've got a very good chance. Right. Uh, and you obviously you ride the same sort of way today from, from for a turn of foot. Well, I don't think anybody's fast enough to take on, take on Paonic, but uh, it's a question mark if uh, if he's going to do the same performance as he did last week or we're going to get him back on the hill. Right. Okay. Uh, Leslie, just want to briefly one or two of the others. Or Graham. Yeah, I'd give Top Weight Reprehend a good chance. So he's mm. been gelded and certainly come to form. One one at Salisbury won nicely, and um, the it's third horse, well, Mockers and Run. Yeah. yeah, the form uh, yesterday at Newbury was was given a good boost. So. You've got to give him every chance, despite the well, race, sort I think. Graham? Yeah, I think the fact of the matter is he's got plenty of pace on in the race. One or two front runners, I think, reprehend or sitting behind. He'll just wait, 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 and Richard Quinn will go whoosh in the last furlong, and he'll come home. I think eight to one is a terrific price, it's a seven or eight to one. Well, so it, it, it's, not, it's not just what will win, it's how it's going to win <laughs> as well. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so reprehend. I mean, when you're, when, you're, when you're playing this game of golf, you know, it's not... Uh, it's not how, how, how you hit oh, the Oh, you play golf as well, do you? No, not very well. <laughs> but quite often. <laughs> but quite often. <laughs> we'll just stick with handicaps, never mind. So two for reprehend, and you wouldn't have, you, you fancy your filly? Yes, I've got to stick by mine. She hasn't done nothing wrong, and uh, we, we must have a first-class chance today. OK, well, uh, I, I think I'll go uh, against Paonic like the others, but I'll go with McCarthy, who tries a mile for the first time. But uh, all in all, a, tr a tricky handicap. What's the weather going to be like? Well, it's lovely here at uh, the moment at Newmarket. And that is the general forecast uh, uh, for the whole day and indeed for the weekend. Fine weather. What about news from other places? Well, Leslie and Graham have all that. Well, at Newbury, as Max told you, it's the Weatherby Super Sprint. That's going to, the prize money there will exceed 120,000, making it the most valuable race ever run at the Berkshire course. Richard Hannan's bidding for his third win there. He's got four runners, and he'll be finding that it's good to firm. The first race is at 1.30. If you're travelling to Newbury, though, leave plenty of time, because on the M4, between junctions 10 and 11, that's at Bracknell, there are roadworks, and with the summer traffic, that could be quite busy. And if you're coming from the north, there are also roadworks on the A34 at East Dillsley. Meanwhile at Ripon, the first race is at 2.35 and it's the fifth meeting of the Institute of Journalists, a royal charter, uh, for supporting the Wooden Spoon Society. Some of us can get wooden spoons down here, I can assure you. However, if you're thinking of uh, going to Ripon, why not take the children along? For the first time, there's a supervised creche for children aged between 2 and 10. All race courses take note. Frankie's friend Jason Weaver goes from Newbury all the way up to Air. The first race there is at 6.40 and Air Race Course starts its two-day Glasgow Fair meeting and tonight all ladies get in free to the race course and there'll be three prizes awarded to the best dressed women so get along there. The feature race is at 7.50, that's worth £7,000, the Seacat Sprint Handicap. Going is good and good to soft, but if the weather stays as predicted and it's dry and sunny all day, it's likely to be good by this evening. With that Open Golf Championship at Turnbury, beware of the traffic on the A77. Meanwhile at Lingfield, we've got a combination of turf and all weather. The first race is at 6 o'clock. The Barry Hills as horses are the best to follow at Lingfield, and his only horse running there this evening is called Ringlet. If you're going there, make note, M25 Roadworks 
Junction 7 to 8 at Rygate. But on a Saturday evening, it shouldn't be too bad. And again this evening on the all-weather at Southall. First race is 6.10. There are no reported traffic hazards, but Mick Easterby's got eight runners there this evening, and four of them happen to be in the 8.10, so you might have to watch out for him there. And Henry Cecil has a runner, supreme star in the last. Not often he ventures to Southall. Always suspicious when I see no reported hazards. I just think that the clerk of the course hasn't been sort of within 10 miles of the track. Really. Yeah. But that's sorry, that's just a personal view. I'm not saying that he hasn't or anything. Mac, let's move swiftly, swiftly on. Early money this morning. Well, it's very interesting how the Mark Wynn Stanley in the Sporting Life and Price Wise in the Racing Post really influenced the early betting. Now, Mark Wynn Stanley went in the 2.30 at Newbury, the Weatherby Super Sprint Trophy. He went for quiz time, 14 to 1. That's gone very quickly with the tote. It's only an 8 to 1 chance for firms like Ladbrokes and Coral. And also, Love You Millions is the tip for Melvin Collier in price wise and 92 has been taken that so 92 love you millions and 14 to 1 quiz time the two trade paper betting tips in Newmark in Newmark in the 415 Palana 15 to 2 that's proving popular early and in the 445 7 to 2 against Tuscan Dawn so Tuscan Dawn 445 Newmarket Palana 415 at Newmarket and in Newbury in the 230 love you millions and quiz time and just to say down in Lingfield tonight is the Bud Flanagan leukemia night and a tremendous yeah. evening down there the crowds get Getting, getting going for a worthy charity, great to have the Bud Flanagan night back at Lingfield. Good old Bud Flanagan, what a name to remember from the past there. But we've got some names to remember now with our first turf trivia, because as we go into the break, Frankie's excused from this one, because really it was only when he was a little baby, he can't be expected <laughs> to know these. But uh, Graham and Leslie can suck on this one, if you'll pardon the phrase. It comes from Mr Jeff Orr, 76 Linden Avenue, Starport on 7, Worcestershire. And the question is, what do Greville Starkey, Alan Bond, Joe Mercer, Lester Piggott and Steve Cawthon have in common, other than the fact that they are jockeys? The answer, or were jockeys, the answer in a couple of minutes. I know what it is. Which paper takes you closer to the top names in racing? What paper has unique facts and figures for all the day's meetings? Who gives you the full rundown on past performances for every horse? Morning, your Racing Post. It's all in here today. The Racing Post is designed for you. It's got all you need for racing today. The Racing Post. Everyone's reading it. Are you? National savings don't pay commission to middlemen, so no one takes a cut from your money or bites from your assets. We don't hit you with any hidden charges. We do, however, have the investment guide to help you through the financial jungle. Snap up your free copy. Call free on 0500 500 0188. The National Savings Investment Guide. It's really been so interesting. Old English, perfect. We return. We return. Searching for the old one. More. Here, who's paying for this? Pay? <laughs> In our time, money is obsolete. We can, however, tell you every winner of the Grand National for the next 50 years. Mm. 1995, hello, saucy. 1996, what? No trousers. 1997, false start again. You think your brickwork's safe as houses? Well, you're wrong. Water's attacking it right now. Stop it with Thompson's water seal. It's this easy. It forms a waterproof barrier so rain can't damage your bricks. Spend a few quid on Thompson's or a few hundred on repairs. It's up to you. Thompson's water seal. Buy now. Don't pay later. Have you got the blues? The ultimate blues. 37 classic originals from you two and B. Forms a waterproof barrier so rain can't damage your bricks. Spend a few quid on Thompson's or a few hundred on repairs. It's up to you. Thompson's water seal. Buy now. Don't pay later. Have you got the blues? The ultimate blues. 
637, classic originals from U2 and BB King, Howlin' Wolf, Buddy Guy, Gary Moore, the legendary John Lee Hooker with Bonnie Raitt, I'm in the mood. Muddy Waters, and many more. I'm in the mood of love. The chart show ultimate blues album on double CD and cassette. Without it, you just haven't got the blues. Bubbles in bottles and boxes at your local sweet shop. There's more in store at Spa. Miles nearer, smiles better. Hi. We uh, thought we'd go to the beach today. Feel like a drive, girl. See you there. Right. We're on, boys. If you want 0% finance over two years... <laughs> ...on a choice of two exciting special editions... which are great fun to drive. You can with the Nissan. So, we said we'd leave Frankie de Tory out, but he got it, he said he knew it. So what do Greville Starkey, Alan Bond, Joe Mercer, Lesser Figure, Steve Cawthon have in common? The answer? They've all been retained as Henry Cecil's stable jockey. Now, this gentleman sent in a supplementary, Graham. Oh, Leslie. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. especially for you. Who has a grill I, I love it. Who a grill I love on your it. face when they sort of... The answers are here. I love it. Who rode Henry Cecil's first winner? Oh, which, my word. Which Newmarket trainer rode Henry Cecil's first winner? Newmarket trainer? Yeah. Newmarket trainer. Which Newmarket trainer? Do you know this one? I've, I've got an idea. Have you been looking at the uh, answer? No, no. <laughs> I had absolutely no idea. What, what do you think it is then? Ray Guest. I said right. Ray Guest. No. no, no. Yeah. Bill O'Gorman. Oh, really? Right. Right. Bill O'Gorman on Celestial Cloud at Ripon on May 17th, 1969. This gentleman, Mr. Orr, says my 18th birthday, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Um, I was even you born. You weren't born. I wasn't <laughs> born. Then. T talking about riding with us, I mean, w in the break we were just discussing how busy Jason Weaver's been. But I mean, all the top jockeys at the minute, their schedule's incredible. Just take us through your day this morning. You got up what time? Well, I got up at six. Actually, today has been an easy day. Um, I think uh, you know the other day when I did sundown, I rode work in the morning. I rode the sundown, and then I, I, I went up to Chepstow, and luckily. Uh, I stayed at Mr. Baldin's for the night and then I rode work the next morning and I rode in Newbury yesterday and I came back here last night and I was up at six this morning again so is I mean when you're riding winners he, it takes uh, you know a little bit of tiredness out of you but uh, he's a stock well, schedule. I mean, you did eight two yesterday I mean what, what about eating I mean when you can't eat <laughs> you have a lot of work to do. I mean, it... No I didn't do eight two but I did eight four but uh, it is, it, you have to keep on top of it. If you let it go, then you always be, you know, you always struggle with it. You have to go in saunas and stuff. Mm. But if you keep on top of it, uh, you can keep going, you know. But like I said, it's only for the next seven weeks we're going to be flat out. And then after that, uh, it's going to become uh, uh, one meeting a day and we can relax a little bit more. So, I'll be frank, when you've got two meetings a day, I mean, does the agent organise the travel and you just sort of turn up with a ticket and waltz through? or? Or how, uh, how done? Yeah, well, my agent Matty has done a great job, but uh, even even the pilot who flies me around, Neil Foreman, he's been great. I mean, he's down to you know we ask him how long it takes from A to B, and then we work around that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if it's possible to do the first of the last, we do it, or then we, otherwise we miss the last race or we miss the first. Are there any easy courses to get to for flying? Obviously here at Newmarket, you land. Yeah, Newmarket, track, Newbury, Adok, where you fly on the track. But uh, most of the other places haven't got an airstrip on the track, so you have to fly something like about 15 or 20 minutes away. And then uh, it's the usual panic of the <laughs> racing traffic coming yeah. in at the same time. And uh, you know, you, we usually make it by the skin of our teeth. But mm -hmm. uh, luckily it, this it, year I didn't miss a ride. Is it, is it too much of a pressure, do you think, that there, you know, with all the travelling about? You think, are you forever worried? You're riding in the last race here, and then you're going on to, say, Windsor in the evening. Well, there isn't Windsor this evening. But I mean, I, 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 halfway through the final third, only think so. Price on my day, better start pulling up now because I've got to dive off and get to Windsor. Or no, uh, no, I mean, uh, I mean, we, 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 we are not that tight, you know. But right. uh, we have to be fairly quick, and 
like I said, you know, you, we just concentrate on the riding, basically, and then the pilot he does the flying. <laughs> well, I mean, you've, you, you've had a fantastic success with however it's been organised. It's obviously gone very well, 149 winners. But, I mean, if, when you go to, you're going to Hong Kong in November, I mean, after all the work you've done, w won't you be sick as can be <laughs> if Jason passes you in the last month? No, actually, I want to I wanna, uh, say that I'm going to leave the 1st of December. And I'm gonna the 1st of December? The 1st of December, and there's only nine meetings left. From the first of December oh, to you've the thirty first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people ask me the same question, so I want to keep everybody, <laughs> right. you know, happy. And like I said, I got offered this great job for three months, and uh, and uh, I took it, you know. Sure. Otherwise, they left me working like on winter again. Yeah, you'd like to be champion, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> of course, yeah, I'm gonna try. And yeah. I think basically the most important thing is try to go through the season without having any falls and without having any suspensions, you know. Yeah. I don't think the night meetings at the end are going to make much difference. But like I said, if I can keep riding without getting hurt, or without getting suspended, uh, is a big bonus. So how far ahead would you like to be by December the 1st? <laughs> <laughs> as far as Six races a day. you've worked it out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, you know, we'll take one day at a time and I can only ride my own horses and uh, we'll see what happens at the end. Well, we'll, we'll take one day at a time, we'll take one race at a time. We'll now move on to the... Uh, <laughs> The listed race here at Newmarket this afternoon, the, the 3.15. Let's take a check on the runners and riders for that. The food, bro food Brokers Aphrodite Stakes over a mile and a half. This is a new event to the racing calendar, a listed event. Now then, let's take uh, a couple of galloping clues here. Leslie, you were at Sandown the day the Royal Hong Kong Jockey Club uh, trophy was in action. And the favourite in this race, Darry, took part in that. Take us through the closing stages. Yes, well, Dara, you can see highlighted there in the white cap, the second colours of Sheikh Mohammed. The first colours are on Wainwright, who's in the lead at the moment, who'd set a good gallop. Dara is pretty well buried here at the two furlong marker and doesn't really have anywhere to go. The horse to Dara is right, so on his left on our picture, it's in the Godolphin colours, and that's Suzanne. And it gave this race's form a good boost, um, winning the Magnet Cup last week. We actually we lose Dara in a moment out of our shot, but both that horse and the Godolphin horse stay on well. And in fact, Darry's absolutely flying at the end. And uh, Suzanne is fourth, and Darry comes through to be third. So, so the form's been given a good boost. And I would, I mean, they're looking at it. It's doing, the horse is doing the best work in the closing stages. So the mile and a half today, you know, could just suit. Well, I was just going to come on to that point next, because it was a mile and a half at Ascot. Now, whether Michael just ran around... Didn't quite stay. Didn't look well, as quite it's, stay. it's a moot point. Was it, Frankie won that race, didn't you? Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, wh whether she just wasn't good enough, mm. or she got beat because she didn't stay, what, what do you think? Well, I think, you know, those Ascot handicaps are very strong run races. And, you know, mile and a half, I mean, you need the horse what really stays a mile and a half. But like today, uh, all fillies and the listed race, so it'd be a nice, sensible pace. And I shouldn't see why she shouldn't stay today the mile and a half. OK. Well, she stays, she's obviously a major contender. Graham, another that stays, whether she's quite quick enough now, the reverse question, is Magical Retreat ran last Saturday at York. Yeah, she ran last Saturday at York uh, with, with credit. Um, and you can see highlighted, she comes to take the race with the two furlongs to go, but just sort of plugs on at the one pace. Earlier on at Haydock, she just hadn't uh, got the toe to go with them early doors. Think about this particular race at Newmarket today, and uh, the, the winner's coming up on the wide outside. The thing about Radical Retreat is that she might just be a little bit better if she helps to force the pace along. Uh, looking through the race, there isn't, uh, well, there's what you've got, Midnight Heights, you've got um, Instant Affair, possibly make the running. But she might just need something to take the pace along, and they might just play her game if she's ridden from the front. Ran good races from the front last year. Instant Affair, you, you just mentioned her, didn't you? Instant Affair uh, won on the course last year. So, but is it further today? It is, yes, isn't it? it yeah. is, yes. Mm. Yeah. What about her? Yeah, yeah, we would, would have chances. I mean, third or three last time at Chepstow, shrewd idea. Oh, that's a that's nothing nothing wrong with that at all. And and listed place, isn't she in Italy? Frankie, you've got you've got a right in this. Let's not overlook that. I mean, to, to a, anybody that close to the stable, she looks as though she's got it all to do. Just one run. Do you know much about her? I don't know much about her. I mean, she ran once in the maiden last year, but. Uh, as you know, Roger Charlton is not a fool. If he asked me to ride this village, she must have a chance. She's in with 8-4 there, and, uh, you know, uh, I think she's going to run a good race. Otherwise, she shouldn't, you know... You, you wouldn't have bothered sending Exactly. Yeah. OK, so, are you going to oppose your... If you couldn't ride, if you couldn't ride yours, think, what would you ride? Well, you have to stick by the favourite, because Darrow. it's... Yeah, it's very consistent. It was, uh, like, uh, you know, like, she, you know, she ran last time at Sandown. She showed that, uh, you know, she's capable to win a listed race, and... Uh, you know, she's the one everybody's got to be. Leslie? I say the same, I'm afraid, yeah. Don't be afraid. Darren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a big, big gap, isn't it, between handicaps and listed company, no matter how strong the race and what have you. 
but I, I do th I do think I do think that Darry can bridge that gap. Right. So a confident selection from all of us for for Darry. Uh, What's your selection? It, my selection is also Darry. Oh right. What I was going to say is, uh, what a pity we haven't got last week's champion tipster uh, winner in the studio because what a week he had uh, uh, last week. Let's take a look at what he came up with. Although he, uh, in saying that, he won by only one point with one point back to third. That's Geraint Jones, 95 points. Linda Bedford from Ealing, second 94, and John Fletcher third with 93. But just look at Mr. Jones's selections. He had the first uh, in every race. He had the first, second, and third in the first, and in the second, and in the third. Got it wrong in the last, only had the first and second, but he got a total of 95 points. That's uh, extremely well done for him. The guy's a genius. He's a genius, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we need to sign him up. So, wouldn't you like to do that today on our races on Channel 4? Four races, three selections per race, and as you know by now, the points are scored according to the starting price and the highest aggregate total will win the £500. So make your selections during the course of the morning and then register them by ringing 0891 991148. And this is the scoring format for you. So starting price, less than 2 to 1, you get 1 point, 2 to 1 to 11 to 4, 2 points, 3 to 1 to 7 to 2, 3 points, and if you're really good at picking them with your pin, 4 to 1 and above, 4 points, and you will get 10 points bonus for every winner. So if you can get your four winners and make sure they're long prizes today, so don't follow our tips for favourites, you could be in with a chance. And there's the number again, 0891 991148. Well, I was at Chepstow on Thursday night and there was another starting stall shambles involving your horse, Frankie Interact. What actually happened? Yeah, it was 11 runners and uh, I was drawn 11 and they have to have two sets of stalls. And I was on the second set and uh, I was low the last and we went to jump out and everybody else's stalls open bar mine. I don't know what kind of te technical problems they had, but uh, I was uh, stuck in the stores and uh, like the start, that was quick enough to call everybody back and we restarted the race uh, a few minutes after. The whole, all the other horses went halfway up the course and poor Green Dollar, the old veteran great warrior, couldn't be pulled up, came under orders, punters lose their money. It's picked up in the racing post, the foreman is blamed for the stalls fiasco, another reason somebody else is to blame for it. But the fact is the punters never got to run for their money with the Green Dollar, although the big three have reimbursed punters as they did with Loxandra at Salisbury. You can't expect them to keep on making ex gratia payments. We've got to get back to the situation where if a horse doesn't race, punters don't lose their money on it. The present not if system it refuses to race. Not refuses. This is intolerable, Jim, no, the way this is going on. Absolutely intolerable. Talking about bookmakers reimbursing punters and helping punters and what they're doing for them, mm. this is in the Sporting Life book. He calls for new place terms. Macbeth, Alex Farquhar up in Scotland, one of the biggest bookmakers there. And what he has to say is quite shocking for those of you who think you don't get very good terms with the bookmakers it is. According to Alex Farquhar, the managing director of Macbeth, on-course bookmakers should be able to bet at a tenth the odds, a tenth the odds, the first three in maiden races when the favourite is odds on. The Standardised each way terms have been partly responsible, he says, for the reduction in each way service to the race going public. Races occur regularly when it's uneconomic to bet each way. And he quotes a race where you go, say, 5 to 2 on, 8 to 1 bar the 1, and 12 to 1, and the 8 to 1 chances are a, a knocking bet for the place. They can't take the each way. All I ask, Alex, is what happens in betting shops? Punters do get on small amounts, admittedly, but they do get on in betting shops. A tenth the odds, even I've never heard of that, but you never know with bookmakers. Um, in the sporting life, Henry Cecil's having a go of me. He says, on the road to disaster. And Henry Cecil picks me up, and of course, the great wise man, seven times champion. Trainer. I rarely argue with him, but I'm rather worried at what he says here. He said that John McCreek came up to me at York the other day, a frightening spectacle, no doubt, and asked how I, as a prominent trainer, could say I thought the racing was encouraging dishonesty. I was there, he said, to support and boost racing and not run it down. To be honest, what does he really know about it all? After listening to him, I came to the conclusion he understands very little. He does not have to train or place horses. Can he really be so naive? Henry, it's not naive, but the words that you use earlier, you said, to try and train and place horses under the present system is almost impossible without bringing in dishonesty. So you're saying that all your colleagues virtually have to be dishonest. Fortunately, I don't believe that. Many punters out there do. But when the leading trainer says it, and Peter Cundell, also the Trainers' Federation, argues that trainers could lie, that is a very worrying situation indeed. 
back to things that are probably more worrying for some of you as well in the Daily Star. Morning glory here. It says, Channel 4 provides a laugh line to punters. David Woods was round the Channel 4 team. I won't tell you some of the jokes that he didn't print, thank goodness, behind <laughs> the scenes. We'll keep quiet about that. And in the sun, a lovely piece here by Claude Duval on the boy Dan Goon. <laughs> Graham drives to the top. That's GG, our voice of racing. Yeah. One thing I liked about here, you said that we all get on extremely well, GG. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well <laughs> that was a bit of a PR thing, but we'll keep going about that. And he also says, but with Derek Thompson, you have to check your pockets. Oh. What does that mean, GG? Well, I'm very worried I, about that. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> just, a, just occasionally we have been known to nick one or two's uh, small, small cheroots, you know, from time to time. Oh, I see. Oh, it's, oh, it's only it's that. Only oh, that. It only wasn't that. his tips that you were worried about. Uh, or, or uh, well, nick well, very worried about his tips. I'm very worried about his tip. <laughs> right. oh, he's doing quite well, he's uh, also, yeah. Well, the bookmaker's certainly worried about the racing post tip and the open. Layers fear, £5 million pound Watson payout. Tom Watson leads the open, and they tipped at 50 to 1, and Watson is very confident of winning it. So the open going on, great betting going on in there. And this punter here is terrific in the sun. I've won the world coup, he says. He covered Manchester United, <laughs> Rangers in Scotland, and Crystal Palace, and he said £106,000 if Brazil win, and £124,000 if Italy win for two £400 bets. So very good luck to him. He obviously hopes that um, Italy will actually clinch it. And they're talking about the World Cup in the sun. I think Jimmy Greaves sums up what we all feel here. No one's missed us and nobody cares, so wake up England. Especially our fans not being out there. Probably a great delight to the Americans. But in the sporting life, Baggio to lead Italy home. Terrific final will be tomorrow, but Italy must have Baggio. And finally, I did like this in the mirror. This is their columnist, Fiona Webster, here. And she says, I only wish I could score with Baggio. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fiona Webster. Well worth reading. What her husband thinks, I'm not quite so sure. But looking at Fiona, I don't think Baggio would fancy her. <laughs> oh, that's that's a bit strong, yes, isn't it? <laughs> no, I don't think you would. I don't think you would. Oh, oh well. I, a question I've been burning to ask. Yeah. You, everybody knows you love football, and you're a man of great flair and you know style. And Italy, a team of. Why do you support Arsenal? That's so boring. <laughs> that's not true because <laughs> Arsenal is a good true. team. Now, actually, uh, you know, one of my colleagues, Willie Ryan, we are good friends. Yeah. Uh, he took me to my first football game in England. That was Arsenal. And since well, then, a lot I, to answer for. Yeah. <laughs> and since then, I had to stick by it. No, it's his judgment, not yours. I say. <laughs> anyway, I like to remind everybody, the, the only reason I'm here, because Italy's still in the final. That's quite right. Not like some of you people. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Actually, Frankie, fo football, I mean, I think people in England, uh, they either like it or they hate it. It's part of, almost part of culture in Italy, isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, um, I mean we digest football all, the whole day. Um, in a way, it's a shame because it kills all the other sports like uh, racing and all the other sports. That's why racing is so big in England because it plays half of the year racing, half of the year is football. But like uh, in Italy, it's constant football and uh, like, like in a way it's good if you're a football person, but being a racing per person, it, it kind of uh, knocks it down a little bit. Why haven't you come in a football show this morning? I mean, you've got a, you've got a, um, this a top is right a, a baseball <laughs> cap. And, uh, Where's the support, the colours for the team? <laughs> I'm not going to take it out until we win the final. Oh, right, you've got Brazil colours on anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, the World Cup's coming up tonight. What's coming up ahead in, in, in racing terms? Let's have a few diary notes for you. Well, tomorrow it's Michael Bell's Open Day. Michael and Georgina, really hospitable, hospitable people. Yard open from 10 to 1. Leslie Graham will tell you very quickly how to get there. Uh, you would come into Newmarket down past the Rowley Mile. You would come down the hill before you get to the town centre. Look out for the Fountain Restaurant on your left-hand side and turn left there into Black Bear Lane. And the yard's about 50 yards along there on the left. So that's tomorrow. Monday at Windsor. Uh, evening fixture there. Um, also tomorrow, I should say, there's a, a, a cricket match at Chichester. Josh Gifford, Peter Hedger, 11, taking part in a cricket match to raise funds for the motor neuron appeal. Graham McCourt, Philip Hobbs and Brendan Powell will all be hoping to catch the eye of test selectors. I don't know who wrote that <laughs> script. <laughs> they wouldn't have much to prove, would they? Well, um, they wouldn't be able to catch the ball, that's for um, certain. Quite. Friday, Pontefract <laughs> evening, it's uh, red shirt evening. So called because Jack Berry and his famous Scarlet Dicky shirt will be there leading the fundraising activities for the Injured Jockeys Fund Holiday Appeal. Raffle pri prizes include a £1,000 brooch and a week for two in Jersey. Should mention one I missed out earlier. On Monday evening, Frankie Vaughan, Ernie Wise, Harry Carpenter, Billy Walker, all off to that Windsor evening meeting in support of the National Association of Boys Clubs. Apologies for getting those the wrong way around. But finally, finally, and I have got this last and is correct that it's last, if you're considering a trip to see the King George at Ascot next Saturday, you are advised to book book in advance if you wish to gain admission to the members enclosure.
Well, um, you know, it's great to have you here this morning, and, you know, I want to ask you so many things, and I want to talk about one of your girlfriends now, Locks on. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we haven't spoken to you about, w about what happened. <laughs> you oh, a sigh of relief. <laughs> that was a great sigh of relief there. What are my girlfriends? What? <laughs> I mean, she, she, she's, she's probably the most popular horse in training, a flat race horse. Um, how do you analyse what happened here? Um, yeah, I think it's uh, uh, a lot of things uh, what happened on the day what uh, didn't work out, you know? I mean, for the start, the six furlongs is, you know, is going to be testing for her. And like, uh, you know, she took a quite strong goal, but really going to the start. And, uh, you know, probably she didn't fire, you know? I mean, because we had we had the cover that are two furlong points, and usually the two furlong points, she should be about five lengths clear. I mean, Frankie, just just watching her here, I mean, Willie rode her, maybe not as forcefully because it was a different distance, and sensibly, obviously, he wanted to get her home. But she seems to be best ridden on a, a loose rein, is that right? L allowed to lob along or not? Uh, <laughs> Well, I'm You're not, not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to reveal my <laughs> secrets, but uh, I just say she, you know, everything just went wrong for her and she just didn't fire, you know. Mm. She did go down to the start. I mean, she actually flew past the start. But stairs. not for a long way, Leslie. Well, it was a good couple well, of fair, furlongs. Yeah, a fair, yeah. fair couple of furlongs. Yeah, flat out. Was, yeah. <laughs> well, not flat out by her standards, but certainly flat out. I mean, we, we just want to just uh, remind the punters that uh, they are not machines, you know. Sometimes they have off days, and she probably has an off day, you know. I and mean, you ride quite a bit at Ian's. I know she's not a filly that works very much in, with, with other horses. I mean, is there a kid glove treatment or special treatment for her? Uh, well, it's, it, we kind of go with that because she does whatever she wants. Uh, the only few times I rode at work at, at uh, Mr. Baldwin, she ran away with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try to avoid and like actually uh, Frank Carrowsmith well, well, won the Air Gold Cup and, uh, and you know he rides her out and he does a great job with her but she's a funny character and she does most of the works on her own and uh, I mean Mr. Baldwin has done a great job to, to get her right uh, every time. And uh, the owner, uh, Jeff Smith, is a great enthusiast, owner, breeder, I mean is he still keen going to the Oh yes, cup? very keen. Uh, I mean uh, you know let's forget about the July Cup but uh, you know so far, whatever he asked, we asked that she delivered. I mean, if you look at the Abbey last year, then you forget about the July Cup. Are you a fickle Italian? Because, you know, uh, it was, oh, Lock Song's my favourite, and then Balanchine, oh, no, she's my favourite now. And there may be another favourite before the season's out. Well, well, I'm, I do quite well with fillies anyway. But they are two smashing fillies, you know. I'm pretty lucky because one's a sprinter, one is a mile and a half fillies, but they're two special fillies. I suppose we're in danger of getting onto fillies other than those with four legs, so we'll go into a break with uh, the next Turf Trivia question, who was sent in by Mr Tom Budge from 35 Lorry Terrace, Thurzo Caithness in Scotland. And his question is, since 1980, which is the only horse to have won the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes and the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe? If you don't know that, you're a racing duffer. <laughs> we'll confirm it to you either way in a moment. Jesus. <laughs> So you've got your new Ford. But suppose you want to change your mind. That's where the Ford commitment gives you reassurance and puts you in control. You get a 30-day exchange scheme for any reason, like changing the color. 24-hour RAC roadside assistance, even if you run out of petrol. And in the unlikely event of a persistent defect, persistent defect during the first 12 months, you'll receive a refund or replacement. If you want to buy a car with confidence, buy with the Ford commitment and stay in control. You think your brickwork's safe as houses? Well, you're wrong. Water's attacking it right now. Stop it with Thompson's water seal. It's this easy. It forms a waterproof barrier so rain can't damage your bricks. Spend a few quid on Thompson's or a few hundred on repairs. It's up to you. Thompson's water seal, buy now. Don't pay later. Tom Cruise. Fence calls Colonel Nathan Jessup. Jack Nicholson. You ever served in an infantry unit, son? No, sir. We follow orders or people die. It's that simple. Demi Moore. You can now buy A Few Good Men on video. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! A Few Good Men. Get your copy now. We want to be saving the pennies. 
I want to be splashing out on smoked salmon and champagne. We want to be tightening those purse strings. I want to be wined and dined in Paris or Rome. We might want to be decorating a spare bedroom. I want to be painting the town. With a new Prudence long-term savings account, you can vary the amount you save each month, or even take a break, should you unexpectedly need to. We want to be having a Bible. Be what you want to be, with the flexibility of a Prudence savings account. <laughs> If you're about to buy a mobile phone, the way to avoid slipping up is to go to People's Phone and check out which of our 12 tariffs is cheapest for you. People's Phone, where talk is cheaper. For your nearest shop, call 0345 10 11 12. There now follows a party political broadcast. Oh. Definitely a dry blackthorn day. Raceform update every Thursday. The latest news for the weekend and the next week. Build up a form book. Order today from your newsagent. Well, I'm sure most of you got the answer there. The only horse since 1980 to win the King George and the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe was Dancing Brave one of the all-time turf greats. Thank you very much to uh, Tom Budge. Now, non-runners come through. Let's confirm that to you. At Southall in the 840, number 10, Vero. Southall in the 840, number 10, Vero. And I think we should uh, just clear up something we said earlier. On our caption from air, when we gave you the, uh, the racing news, I think we gave the first race at 6.40. It is, in fact, 6.20. 6.20 if you're going to air tonight, first race time. Well, when you come racing, bookies are part of the attraction. They occupy pictures self-administered by the National Association of Bookmakers. But does the system work well in the 90s? Well, some columnists, certainly today, doubt that it does. And uh, by law, of course, racecourse bookmakers pay five times the admission price to do business, about £3 million to racecourses annually. But the Racecourse Association have been negotiating with the NAB to reform the whole system. Well, after nearly four years of negotiations, talks have broken down. Sir Paul Fox, why? Well, the negotiations started about three years ago in 1991. They've been going on endlessly. There was the proposal, there was an outline of a deal uh, uh, in March, April. I'm afraid that deal, or the proposed deal, was thrown out by the board of the RCA. It happens in the best of families that the board can turn down a proposed deal. And that's the end of the matter. There have been no negotiations since then. There's a standoff at the moment. Stephen Little, why are the negotiations broken down? The, the negotiations have broken down because the, uh, twice a deal was made and the RCA went back on it. Is that true, Sir Paul? It's not so. I mean, I've been involved in them, I suppose, for three or four months. There was no deal. There was no deal. There was the outline of a deal, and that outline was rejected by the RCA board. I mean, it, I don't think there's any point in going back over the old ground any longer. There's a difference of opinion about that. Let's look forward. Racing is changing. That, that is the key thing. We know the new fixture list will show that there will be more fixtures, there will be more evening fixtures, there will be Sunday fixtures for the first time. In other words, racing is being more customer friendly. The race courses are going out to be more customer friendly. We all want to attract customers. And the only people who are on a time warp are the pitch book thing. Time warp, Stephen. You won't change buying and selling of pitches and money going off to the Racecourse Association. We're very much in favour of having a scheme for buying and selling and pitches. Uh, I think it's fair to say the NAB started the initiative on this because we, we want our members to be able to retire, you know, with a lump sum, uh, which uh, in any other business they'd be able to do. So why can't we reach an agreement where some money goes to the Racecourse Association? Some talk of 20% of what the pitches um, were sold at, money goes to them and everyone's content. Well, we're quite happy to uh, allow the racecourse to get some of the money that's involved in this. But that's not the issue. The issue has to be that the pitch bookmakers have to be brought into the 20th century. What did David Ashworth say in the Sporting Light this morning? 
will bookmakers still be standing there with their grandfather's tatty boards and bags in 20 years time Fair that's point. what it's about it, will they it's only very recently that this has become an issue at all with the rca when we've been talking to the rca all they have wanted to talk about is money well the race association have talked about doing away with the nab a ministry in themselves is there any chance of breaking away uh, i mean the, a healthy sp market is vital to well, race we all realize absolutely. and i think both yeah. sides realize I don't think there's all that great a difference, actually, between the pitch bookmakers, between the NAB and the race courts. What we want, above all, and I think what the public wants, is a better service from the bookmakers. Now, at the Grand National Meeting, I saw a very senior figure in the NAB, the Grand National, offer win only. Now, that is will drive customers mad. Stephen, win only, punters can't get on, they're knocked back on their bets, they're not given computerised tickets, lots of modernisation could go on, boards on the rails yes, and Yes, it could. We haven't, it's not fair to say the NAB has rejected uh, modernisation, but the RCA have not spelt out what they mean by modernisation. What sort of thing do you want? Well, it's up to the NAB to put, put forward some suggestions, isn't it? I mean, you go racing in Australia, you get a computerised ticket, you go somewhere else to get it paid out. There are no arguments. I think old-time racegoers know what to, how to deal with the bookmakers. It's the new people, the new customers we want to attract who have difficulties with the bookmakers, who find the bookmakers difficult to deal with, and who will go to the on-course betting shops. The on-course betting shop, I mean, as you will always say, uh, John, it's, it's not to the advantage of the bookmakers, to the, of the punter, actually. He pays tax. Nevertheless, he finds it a much more friendly atmosphere. But, Sir Paul, how much are you in control of your own members? For instance, Ron Muddle at Wolverhampton on Monday threatened to do away with the away bookmakers. Bookmakers bet on other meetings, and then he's, he's come back again, and now they're going to be allowed there. In other words, have you got mavericks in your own organisation you can't pull in line? I'm not sure about mavericks. I mean, Wolverhampton's been a pioneer of, of, of evening racing, floodlit racing. So you can hardly call the muddles mavericks. But, I mean, some of, the, some of the race courses are getting impatient with the pitch bookmakers. You have to remember that for, at many courses, 40% of pitches are empty. Steve, a long waiting list of, of bookmakers trying to get on. Race course impatient with you, and there's not enough people turning up here because the NEB have long waiting lists often and don't let bookmakers on. Well, again, this is something we've uh, agreed that needs looking at. but. First things first, we need to get the, the franchise sorted out and we thought we had a deal and the next thing was going to be to address these problems. But what we are worried about and the, uh, the Wolverhampton business has uh, shown we're right to be worried about, if we come to a deal again, can we be sure that all race courses will stick to it? If there's a deal, if we all agree on a deal, there's a deal which everybody will fall in line with. But they are, there's no doubt. Some race courses are impatient with the bookmakers. We want them to stay. Pitch bookmakers are an essential part of racing. They add colour. All we're asking is that it, they're brought into the 20th century. I suppose well, we've reached a position, it's like the signalman strike. The people are going, if there was an A-cash, you'd all be going, talking away. It's being escalated. People aren't talking to each other. What now do you see as the future? How is this going to be resolved? There is a standoff at the moment. We thought it would be sensible to have a little cooling off period. And in the meantime, we're talking to our areas, we're talking to area bookmen, to area race courses, and seeing what proposals they're coming up with. We have another uh, board meeting uh, next week, the week after actually, uh, in London, and we'll see what happens then. Stephen, if, if this isn't resolved by negotiation, what will happen? That is difficult. To, it's, it's almost too awful to think about. What, what we're very concerned about is uh, to maintain the strength of the market because the, the whole financing of racing via the levy depends on credible SPs. And the threat of off-course SPs is just too horrible to, to no, contemplate. No, no, of course. We believe in an on-course market, of course. But nothing I've heard this morning from Stephen, who's one of the most progressive bookmakers in, in the place, or from Peter Watson, nothing I once heard says that the bookmakers will change. They want to stick to the old ways of doing things. And that will not be acceptable but, to race But you brought in your own colleague from the BHB, Christopher Spence, to try and broker a deal. Well, Even he couldn't negotiate a deal, and he's uh, a very wise man and shrewd. Uh, Christopher was very unhappy about it, that the, the deal wasn't done. The bookmakers say that he's blaming you as the RCA. Well, uh, all I can say, we're going back over the old ground, John. If you want to do that, one can go into facts and figures about all that. There all I'm, I repeat again, 
There was the outline of the deal. The outline of the deal was rejected by the RCA board. That happens in, 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 in many good families. Sir Paul, Stephen Little, let's hope it doesn't turn out to be another signalman strike, for goodness sake. Get talking. Here, here. Matt trying yeah, to yeah. bring together two parties. Thanks to Stephen Little and Sir Paul Fox for coming in and discussing it. At least we got uh, to know the stories behind both sides, perhaps a little more than uh, a lot of us maybe realised uh, before they appeared this morning. Right, time is pressing. We want a charity, but you've got a special one for us. Yeah. Go on then. Well, I'm not very good at tipping horses, so I'm going to tip Italy for the final. Up Italy, keep going. Uh, so, and the best price you can get Italy, Mac, is around, around 7 to 4, Mac was telling me beforehand. But that's to win in 90 minutes. No, I think that's to win... Uh, yeah, to win the, overall. To win overall. overall? Yeah. So you think that's a good bet? Well, there's two runners. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to... Uh, Each way. <laughs> Each way. Leslie? I've uh, gone for yeah. Wavy in, in the 3 o'clock at Newbury. Roger Charlton's in the 3 o'clock at Newbury. Let's take a quick look at the captions. Graham Good has gone for Love You Millions. Yes, Graham, Love You Millions? Yes, absolutely, Love You Millions, Jim. And how will that win, Graham? Uh, it'll win by coming down the favoured Stands Rail. A lot of horses have to run on the Stands Rail at Newbury from stall 10. Jump, sit, kick, one and a half out, go, go, clear. Should I love the confidence. Rocky, shouldn't it? And I'm going <laughs> to Wait, <laughs> must have been the weight that let him down. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been a jockey. Huh? Um, no, I don't think so. So I've known him a long time. He's never been a jockey shed. Spent too much time talking, bro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's double check those bets. <laughs> right. Love you millions for Graham. Love you millions for Graham. For Leslie Graham, it's Wavian. For Frankie, it's Italy. That's in the World Cup final tomorrow. <laughs> God help him if that doesn't win when he's ridden 149 horses and he can't tip us one. And I'm going for Sama. That's in the 2:45 at Newmarket. Well. We always have uh, the highlight of the programme near the end for you on Saturday. Oh, yes. Let's uh, uh, take a look at the picture puzzle. As we do that, we're going to take our leave of you. Many thanks to Frankie Dettori for coming in, particularly at this time of the year. That's the picture puzzle. Thank you. Derek is your host <laughs> this afternoon. We're on air at 2.55. Rejoin us there. Tomorrow at 8 on 4.